And these are the stories of, of the people of Gaza. The people of Gaza that have been trapped. Trapped. And that's what we were there to do, is try to break open that trap, try to stop that blockade, and the inhumanity that's being shown to the people of Gaza and of the people of the West Bank. Well, our two ships, two ships, the Challenger 1 and Challenger 2, left Crete. Within 12 hours, both ships developed steering problems. Strangely, strangely enough. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I should know enough to carry a Kleenex. <laughs> um, within 12 hours, both of our ships had developed virtually the same identical steering problems. Steering problems to the extent that both of the captains of both of the ships had to start steering with the engines because we weren't going to go back to Crete. We were heading on no matter what. And as the captain would steer us with one engine going this direction and then we would change, he would pull off that engine and push on the other one and go this way. We were a herring boat all across the Mediterranean to try to get to the meeting point where, where four other ships had already started. One of the ships, the Challenger 1, then took off and went to Cyprus to try to pick up some more of the humanity, the parliamentarians, parliamentarians from Scotland, from Cyprus, from uh, the UK, who were waiting there to board the ship and come to the meeting point. My ship went to the meeting point and dropped us off on the Larvae Marmara, that ship that you saw, the one that was attacked. I was then on that ship for the next 48 hours, and I met lots and lots of people on that ship. I met many of the 450 Turkish citizens that were on the ship, many of them working for that humanitarian organization, IHH, but a lot of others from other Muslim and Arab countries that were on the ship. A lot of Europeans and a lot of uh, journalists were on the ship, over 600 people on that ship. It was a very sophisticated ship. It was a it was a ferry boat, a day ferry boat that plied the waters between the islands of the, the Turkish islands. Um, it had six levels on it. It had eating facilities for 600 people. It had a, a studio, a, a press center on it that was set up by IHH, where we had uh, banks of laptop computers that were hooked into a satellite system, so that the over 70 reporters that were on board that ship could file their stories, and instantly those stories of talking to people all over the ship, of, from all of these countries, uh, could be instantly sent out to the world. Videos of uh, things that they, had, interviews they had done were going out on the internet immediately. And there was a television studio up on the bow of the ship, and perhaps many of you saw some of the interviews that were done on the bow of that ship. It was live time, it was live feed into the BBC, into Al Jazeera, into uh, uh, one of the major networks in Pakistan, and one in Indonesia, and one in Malaysia. Did any of you see any of those television feeds? Well, if you watch the internet, you could pick some of them up. Um, it was very sophisticated. Um, and it was the way that ultimately the world found out about the attack on the Marvin Marmara. I stayed on board that, that ship for 48 hours. I met lots of people on it. I met most of the women that were on it. You know, as is a custom in, in many of the Muslim and Arab societies, the women would have an eating area to themselves to kind of get out of the hubbub of what was going on on the ship and a place where women could sleep in the evening. Uh, and it was wonderful because that was where I got to meet lots of women from Turkey, from Kuwait, from uh, Indonesia, from South Africa, from all over the world, including the, the wife, uh, including a woman who was from Turkey, from Adana, Turkey, who was a sportswoman uh, as well as a humanitarian. She was a, a Taekwondo expert. Uh, her husband was also on board. He was the coach of the national Taekwondo team of Turkey. He was one of the nine people that were killed on the Mar it was, it was very good to be with those women. I mean, finding out what, why, what had driven them to be a part of the flotilla. And it was also good to go all over the ship, seeing what was there, looking at all the cargo, cargo that had been inspected before any of the six ships, any of the eight ships originally, had left their home ports, were, inter were inspected by international inspectors. Because it was very important that, that the world knew that 
neutral eyes had looked into those cargo holes, had gone into all levels of the ship to look to see if there were any weapons, because we knew that that, of course, was one of the concerns of the Israeli government, and that we were not there to carry weapons. None of us would have been on a boat if that was the purpose of it, so it was out for our protection also that it was, it's, all of the boats were inspected to ensure that there were no weapons on board. After 48 hours, and virtually at the time when the decision was made that the six ships that were now part of this flotilla would turn and head for Gaza, <clears throat> the last ship that joined the six, foot, the six ship flotilla was the Challenger 1. It had just come from Crete. It had been, the steering had been repaired, and several parliamentarians had gotten on board while in Crete. And those parliamentarians wanted to get off the smaller ship and onto the larger ship because there were parliamentarians from Israel, from the UK. Uh, there were German parliamentarians were on board that ship. Uh, there were parliamentarians from other countries that they wanted to talk to. So they asked if three of us would come off the, the uh, big ship and go onto the smaller ship. And I volunteered to do it along with two Australian reporters. Well, as we finished the offload onto the Challenger 1, the decision was that the ships would move, turn, and move toward Gaza. And I'll tell you, it was one of the, on a beautiful, beautiful day in, in the Mediterranean, with the deep blue of the Mediterranean Sea and the setting sun coming off the, off the water. It was beautiful to see all these six ships turn and slowly go toward Gaza going at the speed of the slowest vessel, which was eight knots. It wasn't like this was a speedy flotilla. This was a very slow-moving flotilla. At midnight that night, we started receiving telephone or radio calls from the Israeli uh, naval forces, saying you are approaching a security zone. Turn back, turn back. This is a closed zone. You have no authorization to go into it. And the radio operator would call each of the captains of the ships by name. The Israelis knew exactly who the pilots of the ship or the captains of the ship were. They knew exactly who the organizers uh, of every organization was on all the ships because it was public. Uh, most people had been writing articles about their participation uh, on the flotilla because people were proud to be a part of an international citizens group that are saying to the Israeli government and to their respective governments that this siege of Gaza must end. So it wasn't like anyone was trying to hide the passenger list. And if Mossad is as good as it thinks it is, I'm sure that the passenger list were, had been known for a long time uh, to the Israeli intelligence agency. Um, the captains of the ship each responded to the Israeli uh, naval forces saying, we are unarmed civilian ships carry unarmed civilian activists on board. We are going to Gaza because we believe it is an illegal siege, a blockade that is strangling people in Gaza. It is our duty to do this. Uh, there were some other reports by the Israeli military that there were other voices that were coming on that were saying not so pleasant things. Hawada Arif, who was, one, who was on our ship, was monitoring the radios all night long, and she said she never heard those, those transmissions. So one of the questions that we have for an international uh, investigative team are, are the allegations that the Israeli military had that there were uh, rather rude comments coming from some of the people on the ship. Is that really true? 